Hello guys, welcome to another video. Um, I just before I get into this video here about Disney Channel for Millennials, I wanted to give you guys a quick do update on Dr. Shola, those of you who follow my channel and who heard about the terrible, terrible injustice that happened to Dr. Shola. Um, I have started writing some of the nonprofits that I had mentioned in uh, my most recent video. Um, giving updates on Dr. Shola. Um, part of those being the NAACP, UNICEF, um, Black Lives Matter, Black Lives Matter UK. Um, and I've basically all reached out to them to update them on the situation and urge them to take some sort of action. I encourage all of my uh, view, my, all of my subscribers to do the same. Um, and if you aren't completely caught up with the situation, please just go and look at my video um, uh, label praying for Shola. Um, and then you'll you'll be all up on it. And so with that being said, let's get right into it. Hello, 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 my friends. It is your girl, Nashua. Thank you for being here with me for another video. Do me a favor, if you have not already, please go ahead and hit that like and subscribe button. That way you'll know whenever I post a video and you can always follow my channel. Today I want to talk about how I feel like Disney Channel was different for millennials than it was for Gen Z. This is going to be a part one of a, of a two-part series because I feel like I really cannot cover everything here. You guys really let me know what you think in the comments and tell me if I'm kind of hitting hitting this in the right place. Now I'm 31 and I was born in 91. Um, for me, I would say the most iconic Disney movies are Lizzie McGuire, um, That's So Raven, Even Stevens, The Amanda Show, um, and then you gotta kind of go into the animated series. So Recess, <laughs> I'm really taking it back from you guys are like, oh yeah, 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 I'm getting those vibes. Um, Recess, Lloyd in Space, um, PB and J Otter. Now, I feel like that was on Disney Channel, so some, someone correct me if I'm not right on that. Because um, I know that Disney Channel would sometimes be on ABC, ABC's One Saturday Morning. I know like... Um, sometimes people get Disney Channel shows mixed up with Nickelodeon shows, so I might be flipping some stuff up, so let me know if I am. Now, that's on the millennial side. We, we also had the famous life of Jet Jackson. Um, I'm not going to talk on that one too much because I don't want to really drudge up the old history for the people, the family of the guy who, um, the actor from that show, because we know that he sadly took his own life. Um, what else? The Proud Family. There we go. So that's what I was trying to think of on the animated series. The Proud Family. So those are the shows that really stand out as iconic to my childhood. Some of the Disney Channel original movies for us that I remember. Cowbells, Xenon. I think that Hannah Montana was probably a part of a transition from the millennials to the Gen Z kids. But I do think that technically Hannah Montana was kind of a part of the, the millennial landscape or whatever. Um, I, 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 I feel like Disney Channel was different for Gen Z, guys. Now, after we t take all of the ones that I kind of just talked about, and, and, and I, my experience might also be different as a girl, you know, I, I don't want to get too much into binary gender norms and all that stuff but I do think as a girl I probably watched more shows centered around uh, a lead girl character versus boy so uh, if there are some some Disney Channel aficionados some millennial Di Disney Channel aficionados and your guys if you remember the channels that you the the shows you liked oh the sweet life of Zack and Cody that's one too but I also think that the sweet life of Zack and, Zach and Cody was almost a transition from the millennial into the um, Gen Z, but you know, you guys can let me know. I'm not sure about that one. Now, I feel like the Gen Z kids was definitely, and, and I know this because I have a nephew who is exactly seven years younger than me. Um, well, not exactly. We weren't born on the same day, but he's seven years younger than me. And it's my older brother, my heart, my, my, my older brother. Um, it's his son. And, uh, but he's almost closer in age to me than my actual brother. 
um, not necessarily closer to me, but just closer in age to me. And so it was really funny to see the stuff he watched on Disney Channel uh, because I was watching, you know, different shows. Like, we are seven years apart, but he's definitely the Gen Z, I think, personality. Now, I feel like 2000 was a very crucial year for Disney Channel and for me. Like, this is around the time where I was nine or ten years old. Between, I would say, two, 98 and 2002, you know? And uh, I'm not going to talk about Spongebob too much because that's, that's Nickelodeon, so I'll do another video for that, but... Spongebob was also a part of the shows I was watching then, um, like, yeah, it's such a vibe, guys, it's such a vibe. Whereas my nephew, like, he knew about Selena Gomez, he knew about Ashley Tisdell, um, like, that generation definitely was much more of the Wizards of Waverly Place generation, the High School Musical generation, um, I'm not really going to get too much into the shows because that's going to be part two. For this one, I'm really just going to focus on the millennials. Now, um, I want to specifically talk about a few of the ones that were really my favorites. Now, my favorites were, um, and I think I said at the Amanda show earlier, but that's also Nickelodeon. So, um, my favorites were The Proud Family, That's a Raven, Lizzie McGuire, Even Stevens, um, shows like that. Now, why is it? So, <laughs> I look back on, you know, and also I'm going to talk on, on, on recess too. I look back on my younger years, and I'm going to do another video about this, but a very sort of iconic and defining moment in my life was, you know, as a child, I was so into... Disney movies and Disney channels, Disney characters. I had all the dolls, you know, I just, I loved it. So my mom had taken me to the Disney store and this is just giving me a wonderful, nostalgic feeling talking about all this stuff because can you guys think back to a time? Can you think back to a time where you didn't have to worry about your bills? You didn't have to worry about deadlines, you know, your tax deadlines. You know, your biggest concerns were keeping your room clean uh, so that you could go to Six Flags on the weekend. You guys remember that Six Flags, those six, six, six Flags days. Do you remember a time where, you know, the worst part of the day was when the street lights came on and you had to go inside the house? You know, I can remember those days, and this is giving me wonderful nostalgic feelings, but one of the most defining moments, I would say, for me as a young child, especially as a young child of color, um, was going to the Disney store, and I was so excited about this. I was so excited. Um, I must have been about five or six years old, and we go in, and I look around. I don't see... I don't see any toys of young black kids. Now, I don't want to even say young black girls, but even kids, even if it was a boy, you know, I would have taken a little black G.I. Joe soldier. I'm all for inclusion. And my parents were, so... But nothing in this store with African-American representation. And my mom was sort of standing at the front of the store because, you know, when you're a kid, you run into the store, you run around, you just basically almost leave your parents. Your parents know that there's this unspoken rule. It's just like, go, roam, you know, pick it out, whatever. And so I had sort of left my mom and just ran around the store like this Tasmanian devil. And I show back up in front of my mom and I say, Mommy. None of these toys look like me. None of these toys look like me. And that almost makes me want to cry. You know, I talk about in another video, um, empaths, the work that we need to do to continue to be positive and successful. Getting in touch with your inner child, guys. A lot of the stuff that you find that you might have difficulty with in your adulthood, it can be connected to your inner child. And, oof, I feel for my inner child. 
that day. You know, that was a sad day. And my mom, she went and talked to the store, the store manager, and said, you know, my daughter just broke my heart. She just said that none of these toys in here look like her. And the manager said, well, we have Mulan. <laughs> well, we have Mulan. You know, so that was a defining point for me. So I remember that. I was six at that time, and that was 1997, five or six. So that had to be 96 or 97. And then flash forward to 2000, when I had grown a little bit older, a little bit wiser. I was 9, 10, 11 years old or whatever. And so I still was a, a little girl, but um, I feel like I had gained a level of maturity. And so the shows that I watched on Disney Channel were like, that's a raven, the proud family, um, recess. There's even, as told by Ginger, I'm not sure if that is Nickelodeon. So if that's Nickelodeon, I'm going to come back to that one. But I'll speak on as told by Ginger a little bit in this video too, because that was really defining for me. Um, seeing representation in that's a raven, in... Um, Less so in Lizzie McGuire, even though I still loved Lizzie McGuire. I think I loved Lizzie McGuire because of the dynamic with her and her mom. I mean, my mom uh, was a teacher, and she was my teacher. Jesus. <laughs> she was my teacher up until I was six. So, and she is no nonsense. Jesus, Lord. Um, that was tough. And so the dynamic between Lizzie and her mom, where her mom was just basically like a helicopter mom. Uh, I got a lot of good... Uh, I, and that felt relatable to me. Um, That's a Raven, the friggin' storyline was on point. I'm going to get to how I feel like it's problematic, problematic, but it was on point. It was funny, you know, the, and Raven so perfectly um, represented a, a, a depiction of a young girl of color who was both smart and funny and relatable, you know, and approachable. So that was lovely. I loved that, you know. Um, even Stevens, you know, I had just had the experience of even myself sometimes being the class clown and having class clowns in school. And when you're a, a little girl, when you're eight or nine, sometimes the class clowns, you're like, oh, they're so cool. And you're like going home writing in your diary. Ooh, you know, so that was sort of the Even Stevens character. And we know that Shia LaBeouf uh, is partly Jewish. So there was also some representation in there. I can't say it's the most representation in the world, but okay, I digress. Um, the thing is, is that I notice now as an adult, I feel like for millennials, we got a really good taste of quality entertainment combined with um, multiculturalism on Disney Channel, but you still ran into tokenism, you know, and so that was the difficulty that I saw. When you saw on Recess, the kid that had the, I'm sorry, not on Recess, but as told by Ginger, the kid that had the, the, the brace face, you know, the whole metal contraption on his face, he was black, but he's a token, you know, the, the main characters, even though I got so much from as told by Ginger. I mean, I feel like, Shows like As Told by Ginger, Lizzie McGuire, That's a Raven. As a young girl, I don't know about boys, but it really helped me navigate my changing body, my changing voice, and um, sort of observation and coming to understand who I was as a child, as a young preteen girl. And so, uh, but I also noticed as an adult, the thing is, is that as an adult, I noticed that Raven, you know, when you look at Even Stevens, when you look at Lizzie McGuire, um, there's less of a, how do you say it? There's less of a cheeky narrative that's stone in there, um, like the main character being a witch, you know, and you notice the same thing with twitches, like the, they're witches. So, in other words, Lizzie McGuire is able to stand alone. Like, she's just a normal teenager. She's not a witch or anything like that. 
even Stevens, he's not a witch or, uh, you know, anything like that, wizard, whatever. Okay, we get Wizards of Waverly Place, cool, whatever. But um, they're able to just stand alone, and I don't necessarily like that Raven's show got the... Oh, we gotta we gotta make her a, a, a witch who can see the future to be able to put this on Disney Channel. It was almost like you can just hear the execs in the room saying, "Oh, guys, we gotta have something that sizzles," you know. Um, Hannah Montana, I didn't see that show very much, but I get the same idea. You know, was there much representation there? I feel like Victorious falls into that same tokenism aspect. But Victorious, I think, is Nickelodeon. Guys, I'm really screwing up with the networks. I just Sometimes it's just oof, so similar. Um, the Proud Family. Now, The Proud Family, I really liked that show. I liked that show, but I did think at times it could really be teetering on the stereotypes of the ghetto black person the angry black woman or whatever that is you know it was very hard for Disney Channel apparently to make shows like Lizzie McGuire but just for black people where they just were normal people they didn't necessarily have a, a ghetto manner in which they talked which I feel like that's a Raven and the Proud family both of them kind of were written with the black people talking a little ghetto you know what I mean so um there's that but at the same time I really do feel like Disney Channel was better for Millennials when I look at High School Musical I look at um Sam and Cat for example uh which no Sam and Cat I think is also Nickelodeon I'm so sorry guys um when I look at uh, Wizards of Waverly Place, for example, it just has a, it hits different than it did for the Millennials, you know, it just seemed like Disney, at this point, Disney had gleaned the fact that uh, a certain formula would make them money, and so they just kept down that road, but, um, yeah, I, 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 I feel like there was more representation for the millennial Disney shows, I feel like it was a little bit more genuine and authentic. Um, it wasn't always about a kid becoming a superstar, you know, like the, it, it could also just be a kid being a kid. I feel like that's a raven, like Lizzie McGuire, that really accentuates that, um, that a kid could just be a kid. Well, you guys, that's all we've got so far for this portion of it. But as I said, I will post a part two where I discuss how I think the uh, Gen Z Disney Channel was different. So we just covered a bit on millennials and we'll talk about this more in part two. So be sure to like and subscribe. Click the bell so you'll know exactly when I post part two. And I will see you guys in the next video. Have a great one. Bye.